What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Real Wise Podcast. Um, Friday, welcome. This is uh, this is exciting because this is part two of three um, of the podcast. I how an entrepreneur lost seventy five pounds. That entrepreneur is me. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my journey and a little bit about uh, what you can do if you're an entrepreneur, business owner, real estate investor. Uh, and maybe do something like this <clears throat> on your own. The last podcast that we had, we really kind of focused on food and uh, nutrition and uh, drink. And uh, this one, I want to turn it just a little bit. I want to focus on um, something that is the second phase of, of uh, this podcast series. And that is, what did I do for exercise? <clears throat> excuse me, what I did was uh, I just started, you know, slow, basically, I started walking, and walking was going to be my plan until I realized how much I was kind of recovering uh, from that. And uh, I got into running, I used to run a lot as a youth. Uh, I'm not a, a youth anymore. Um What's that movie? Uh, the Two Utes. I forget. Uh, my cousin Vinny, I think it is. Anyway, uh, but I realized how much I actually enjoyed running. And as I started this process back last September, like the end of September, October 1st, um, I knew I wanted to make a change. I just didn't know where, where it was going to go. I let the process bring me to where I am today, and I'm nowhere near my destination, but I, I do have to say that taking that process and just letting it happen in rollout was really good because I fell in love with the process. Uh, I wasn't looking for a destination. I was just liking the process more and more every single day. And as I try to develop these better habits of eating, nutrition, working out, and other things, that we'll talk about on the next podcast. Um, I, I realized how important it is for habits to fall in love with the process. And this idea of just letting it happen and see where it takes you was the best for me. I don't know if that's the best for everybody, but it was the best for me. So um, let's get rolling. I am excited uh, about this. So today we're gonna cover what I actually did for uh, working out, you know, how I transitioned and lost the 75 pounds. Now, again, I just want to kind of give you my uh, disclaimer here. I am not a personal trainer. I'm not a licensed personal trainer. I'm not a doctor, physician, nutritionist, um, any of those things. I always recommend you will want to get checked out by your own professionals in your own core group of medical or exercise people or nutritionists before you do any of this. Uh, because I'm not a specialist, I just know what has worked for me. Do I think it can work for others? I do, but I wouldn't want anybody to get hurt or anything like that. So when we ended the last podcast, I was talking about no cheat days for me on the food side. In the food and drink side was really, really important. If, uh, if you want to review that, just, just look back at season one, episode three. This is season one, episode four. So if you want to go through that in what I did and in what I didn't do, uh, that might be a good prelude to this one. Uh, but I, I mentioned the no cheat days because I realized on my own limitations with developing habits in the past, Cheat days were my escape, but they were also the door to stop the good habits that I was building. So I did, I did no cheat days on food, and I've done no cheat days on exercise and, and working out. And, my, my, and I'm not saying I didn't recover, because that's going to be an important thing that we're going to talk about here, but I had no cheat days. I haven't had a cheat day, and I love it. Again, I fall in love with the process, not the def destination. And I want to talk about that uh, real quickly here. The process of, of working out is a process. You do damage to the body, you recover. You do damage to the body, recover. 
And so because of that, I've instituted a lot of things that work for me that I've listened to kind of my mentor group and my close knit circle with this. We'll talk about those, who those people are and what they did for me on the next podcast. But as I was telling you before, as an entrepreneur, real estate investor, um, we do crazy shit with our bodies, uh, lack of sleep, uh, travel, um, you know, sitting in a chair for a long time. All of that stuff is terrible for your body. And uh, I just got to the point where I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I wanted more. And I wanted to get paid in a different way besides monetarily. Uh, I ended the last podcast with that. I want to reemphasize that again, how important that is. Uh, if you don't know what I mean, I'm going to do a whole podcast on that. Um, that one concept alone has really kind of changed my thought process, changed my life, uh, changed my life with ideas of things like retirement and putting pressure on people to retire with so much money and all, all this nonsense. Uh, so back to working out. The process for me was doing damage to my body, recover. But how do you enjoy that process? I did it through the feelings and chemicals that were happening in my body. Um, I talk about that on our sales side a lot, the chemistry that happens in the pharmacy that happens in one's brain in the sales process. Not a lot of people talk about it with regard to habits and working out. Shout out to Atomic Habits. I read that book. And a lot of what I'm telling you is in that book. Uh, so if you want to pick that up, I think that would be a good um, uh, maybe baseline to start with. I, I mentioned a couple of books in the last podcast that helped me. That's definitely one that has helped me here with the working outside. The next major rule that I did in losing the 75 pounds on the work outside is giving yourself one hour at a minimum, not including your shower recovery, any of that one hour at a minimum, it's called the one hour rule. <clears throat> and if you do not give yourself one hour, you really um, lose the opportunity to really give your body the benefits it needs from working out. Um, in a minute, I'm going to be talking about these zone trainings that I do. There's five zones to heart rate workout. Zone two and zone five is the ones that you know, I focus on due to one of my uh, people that I really listen to in this field as a medical doctor and trainer. Um, but you'll understand that as you get working out, the body needs at least 45 minutes to at that stage to gain true, true benefit. Do you gain benefit at 20? Yeah, but it's minimal. Um, but if you're starting out, I want you to do something. Give yourself an hour. Well, for me, I couldn't, when I far, first started this, I couldn't run an hour. I couldn't even run 15 minutes. Um, so I started walking. And that's the other thing I want to give you. If you, you're dedicating an hour to yourself and you're giving yourself an hour, do something that's challenging to you at that point, at that stage. To me, it was walking at a brisk pace. Um, and I slowly started to build my aerobic base. Um, guys, I, I've learned so much during this process. And one of the things that I've learned is this aerobic base, heart rate two, uh, which you'll know about in a second, uh, where the heart is, is really working uh, pretty hard, but not hard enough to where you can't carry on a conversation while you are exercising. It's just getting to the verge where that might be a little bit difficult, breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth. And really, that might be a little bit difficult, but you can do it. That's kind of a, a good indication that your heart is in this zone two, which is an aerobic base. No matter what you're doing for working out, an aerobic base is really, really important. And that's because how the body um, uh, utilizes and becomes efficient at energy use, how it, what it takes energy from and how it processes that energy. Um, and again, I'm, I don't want this particular webinar to be uh, a dive into that as much as you getting the overall picture here. That's how you're going to really benefit from this. So giving yourself one hour, what can you do for one hour, whether that be running, walking, biking? Uh, uh, this could be done outside on a treadmill, indoor bike, outdoor bike, hiking, 
Um, there's all kinds of stuff. Strength training is an important part of that. Obviously, that's a little bit different than the aerobic side, but that is also included in your hour as well. Giving yourself an hour. Not every day you're going to run every day. For instance, um, my schedule when I first started out was mu is much different than my schedule today at doing this. I'm only seven, eight months into this. So my schedule in seven, eight months is going to be completely different than it is today. I'm growing. I'm getting better. I'm getting more efficient. My body's becoming used to doing different things. So I'm running. That's my choice. You're, I mean, here are some people. I hear you. You're like running. Who the heck would run? I, for me, I just like it. I like the running. It's it's uh, for me. It's it's a way that I can um, escape just a little bit from my mind and all the things that I think about. It's like. I'm in a little bit of a trance. I'm in a little bit of a, you know, I just go, I'm in a zone, if you will. So that was, uh, that was the one I chose. Other people might choose biking, hiking, <coughs> excuse me, other things uh, from an aerobic base or, or weightlifting, CrossFit. There's all kinds of things that you can do, but give yourself an hour, not including your shower or recovery. People might say, well, John, I don't have an hour. Yeah, you do. 168 hours in a week, you got one hour a day you can give you. You give maybe another company, if you're working for someone as a W-2, eight hours a day, maybe 10. You give uh, sleeping eight hours a day. You can give yourself one hour a day at least, one hour a day. It's probably more like an hour and a half just to be up front. But if you can't give yourself that, you're not going to make the progress that you're going to want to make. Um, I can tell you that from experience. So one hour a day, it's probably going to be closer to one hour and a half or an hour and a half. Um, I don't know why I just said it like that, but 90 minutes, 60 to 90 minutes, that's where you're really going to see a big advantage. Get up earlier, go to bed earlier, get your, get your, your time in, give yourself an hour. Do not mess with that. Do not take any cheat days. You're going to see results. And uh, it's going to be really, really important that uh, you do that. And if you can commit to yourself, don't have other people hold you accountable either. We talked about that under the first podcast. Hold your own fucking self accountable. I don't mean to be cussing on this part, but I want to emphasize how important that is. You won't do this if you're depending on other people to hold you accountable. I don't care if you're in a mentorship program or you've got a coach. You, certainly they can help. But if you're not holding yourself accountable, you're not going to do this. How bad do you want it? Do you want it, as Eric Thomas says, uh, you know, more than you want to breathe? Then you'll make a difference. But damn, man, make this, make yourself accountable. Hold yourself accountable. And you're going to see some major, major differences with not only what you eat, with your workouts, who you surround yourself with, how you spend your time. That's going to be so, so huge. Um, again, I was telling you, I walked at first. That's how I got started. Um, I gave myself an hour and don't, don't sleep on walking. Don't sleepwalk. No, don't sleep on walking. Walking is a great way to start an aerobic exercise. It does get you into that zone too. If you walk at a brisk pace, you can get that heart rate up. If you're on a treadmill, you add a little bit of incline to that treadmill. Those are the secrets that I've learned over my journey here. It does amazing for your heart. Matter of fact, if you stayed walking on a treadmill and just increased the incline and you got to you know, a 15% incline, most people couldn't stand you know, five minutes on that at that incline. I'm telling you, incline makes a huge difference. So that's where I started. And uh, because I was, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I got choked up there. Here, watch this. Okay, I'm all good. Water now. Water's good. Uh, stay hydrated, folks. But because um, uh, you're working yourself hard, even at the beginning, recovery is so important. Give yourself recovery. Let me tell you what I did. So when I would go and in, in walk, uh, an hour at a brisk pace in watching my zones, uh, my heart rate zone, and making sure I was at a specific heart rate uh, for zone two, which for me was about 125, let's call it. Um, I uh, then would the next day get on the bike and I would do a bike for 30. I would stretch for um, 15 and I would meditate for 15. That's right. Meditation was 
so huge for me in this process. I meditate probably four, three, four or five times a week now just because I enjoy it so much. I include that in my hour because if you're not right mentally, you're not right physically. Your mental portion is a part of your physicalness. I hope that's a word. But your mental capacity and how healthy you are mentally is a big part of that. So I've included that in my hour workouts. I probably am at an hour and a half now, including my uh, when I do meditate like that. But for me, that's helped so, so much. So make sure you're giving yourself recovery. Most people, and I learned this from uh, one of the mentors that I listened to, his name's Coach Perry, he's a running coach. And he talks about the fact that most people, when they start out on an exercise regimen and working out, they go way too hard for too much and too long. Um, they don't give their body enough time to recover. Understand the um, physical scenario that's going on with your body. You're tearing down muscle fiber and cells uh, to build back better. Shoot, I shouldn't, I shouldn't use that term right now. Some of you are laughing. Some of you have a serious face. To, to really help your building, body become stronger. Um, I'm still laughing on that. I can't believe I said that. So uh, tearing down your body from a muscular standpoint to build a better body moving forward. There's a lot of chemistry that goes into that. And we won't do it on this particular webinar, but I am, I'm um, really intrigued by the chemistry that goes on in your body, not only as a professional salesperson and entrepreneur, but also as somebody that's working out now. I didn't always work out, by the way, so I'm not this professional workout person uh, or pro athlete. I've always been an athlete. I played college sports, uh, basketball, and things like that, but I'm not a pro athlete. I guess maybe in my mind, sometimes I believe I am. But giving yourself the body, the, your body, the time to recover is really, really important. Make sure you're surrounding yourself with people that can coach you with that. Our next uh, uh, podcast is going to be all about who those people were for me. Borrow these people, use them in your own scenario, especially if you're a biker, a runner, weightlifter, any of those things. Um, so recovery is really important. Build as you go. You have to challenge yourself continuously at first. Um, when I was telling you, I started out walking at first and now I run. I can run for two and a half, three, four, well, not four hours probably, but three, three and a half for sure. And I'm moving up to, to pass that uh, definitely. Uh, but when I first started out, I couldn't walk 15 minutes or sorry, run 15 minutes. Build up to that, but challenge yourself. In the way I challenge myself, it's easy. It's, it's number one, really how I feel. Number two, what's the heart rate going on with my heart? I do wear a chest strap with regard to heart rate monitor as well. But training in the five zones of your heart rate is really, really important. And it's how you stay organized. Most people never train that way. And I would encourage you to do a little research and really think about um, how that happens. Our next podcast, I'm going to give you all these links that has helped me with this and try it out, check it out, see if it helps you. But it's really, really helped me to be able to train in those zones and really understand that when I'm going out for a, a six mile run, which I do regularly now, um, I, I want to stay within a certain zone. So if I'm in zone two, I'm not really pushing my body. I'm not worried about the time that I'm running this in. I'm worried about running comfortably and in good form. I would be doing the same if I was biking. I'd be doing the same if I was, you know, hiking or, or uh, uh, doing any other cardio or definitely in weightlifting, you have to have the right uh, posture and position uh, with that. But um, I, I really believe in this training for a zone. 80% of my training has been low intensity training, uh, meaning zone two, pretty much. That's my heart rate, zone two. 20% has been high intensity, zone four and five, <clears throat> zone four and five, mostly five, basically. But people, again, people run or bike at a higher intensity that they sh than they should. And I really feel that this is the key of people giving up because they train harder than they should and they are, they're miserable at it. Um, training at zone two has really 
really become enjoyable for me. Not only is my body, and I'm, I'm bragging here a little bit. Who brags like this though? Watch this. Not only is my body better at um, taking in oxygen and bringing energy to the cells through, um, you know, uh, mitochondrial um, activity in producing that all important ATP, adenine triphosphates, um, to give the give those those that's the powerhouse of the cell, by the way, the mitochondria, and giving that muscle the energy it needs to perform. And so, it's one thing to have the energy in your body; it's another thing to transport that ability to get that there. That's through aerobic aerobic, meaning oxygen, and how that oxygen you breathe in, how that brings that uh, scenario to the muscles. And then finally, uh, the spark plug of, of activity and working out, and that is, um, uh, you know, what is really, really important uh, with regard to uh, the, the spark plug of electrolytes. I'm, I'm trying to think of a special way to say that. I should get off that horse. Uh, but electrolytes is the spark plug. Think of fuel like uh, fat and protein and glycogen and carbs and all this stuff is fuel. The body's deci deciding on what fuel to use. So pretty much in zone two, they're going to use fat. So if you're trying to lose weight, one of the ways that I lost the 75 pounds is I focused on zone two. It's the best zone for burning fat. It's the, it's the most comfortable position once you can get there to burn fat. You're just going to burn fat, burn fat. Now, if you go up to zone three or zone four, guess what? You're probably not burning fat. You're burning other things, uh, carbs, glycogen, protein. You're burning other things for these calories uh, to burn. So again, if you're looking to lose weight and then put on muscle, I got a great brief plan for you. And that is Work out aerobically in zone two, about 80% of the time. And then for your other working out periods, make sure you're doing uh, weight training and, and building muscle mass that way, uh, giving yourself time to recover and things like that. Again, check with your professionals, but I'm telling you, this was the secret for me. This is really, really what worked in conjunction with our last podcast when I talked about food. But this is really, really um, important. So once I chose what I was going to do, I didn't know it when I first started out, but once I chose, Hey, I'm going to be a runner. I really enjoy running. Once I got through all the nonsense of I couldn't breathe, my legs felt like rubber, all that stuff. Once I got through that, I was like, I'm going to be a runner. I really enjoy this. I really enjoy my time to think. I really enjoy my breathing and how I'm breathing and the rhythm of that. It's helped me with my business I have more energy during the day. It's helped me be creative. I think of more shit on my runs that I need to incorporate or do than I do any other time. Uh, so it's really, really helped me. But because I'm a runner now, I'm running for a goal. So I don't know where this is taking me, but I've registered for the Indianapolis Half Marathon in May, May 7th. So if you're registered for that, I'll see you there. If you're not, who knows, maybe you read about me winning the thing. I don't know if I'm going to win the thing. Probably not going to win the thing, but I am going to finish for sure. I do know that. I also registered for a really fun race that I've raced twice before in my life, but over a decade ago, over 15 years ago. Uh, it's called the Big Seven. It's in the Quad Cities. I went to school there at SAU and um, uh, it's in Iowa. So I am, I'm going back in July to run that thing. It's seven miles. It's very challenging. It's a hill course. In, in the top marathon runners and top runners in the world go to this race. And um, it's, uh, it's seven miles, not a real long race, a lot of hills, but there's a heck of a party afterwards as well. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to that. And who knows, I'm going to run those two races. Who knows, but that's my goal. I'm running for that. Guess what, guys? I'm not even running for time. I'm just running to feel good and get these out of the way to see where that goes. Am I going to run a marathon? I don't know. Am I going to run maybe an ultra marathon? I don't know. Is it in the is it in the mix? Yeah, I'm talking about it. I'm not saying I'm going to, but I just am intrigued by this so far. I'm just seeing where this goes. Not a lot of pressure uh, on this, but it's really nice to train for something. So that's the other thing I'd want to tell you guys: train for something. If it's a bike race, put in a bike race. This 
A lot of this started talking about a bike race in Iowa where you ride across the state from the west side to the east side. It's called Ragbri. And uh, we, I, I probably am going to do that next year, 2023. It was a little too tight for this year, just with everything going on with the family and in this particular journey. But uh, I recommend running, riding, or doing something for a goal. If it's CrossFit, whatever it is, get in a get in a competition, get in a goal. You don't even have to perform for time. Like I'm not really overly concerned with time. I'm going to think about it, but I'm not ultra focused on it. I just want to relax, have fun, do the best I can at this race. Once I get through these, then I'm going to think about more on performance and what I want to do for personal bests and records and um, my personal record, not, uh, you know, uh, Guinness Book of World Records or anything like that. Um, I do want to emphasize again, cross training. Uh, with running, I do a lot of Peloton biking. I do some body weight lifting. I love to stretch uh, I, I got a lot of that from David Goggins. I, I second time I'm talking about him in, in the last two podcasts. Um, he stretches now for a few hours a day. I'll say that again. He stretches now for a few hours a day. You guys are probably aware of what he does from a running standpoint, performance and workout, but he stretches. Uh, and as we get older, it's more important to stretch. And I'm telling you, I love my stretch time. So I do that on a regular basis. Cross training, really, really important. And then I was telling you before about meditation. I use Peloton meditation. I use also use Headspace. It's a guided meditation and it's really helped me to calm down. Um, if you're ADHD, which a lot of entrepreneurs are, if you are uh, not HDHD, but you have a lot of shit on your mind, give yourself some time to meditate. I do this during the day. I also do this at night. I'm typically the first one to go to bed in my house. So I put on a sleep meditation and there's nothing like just bringing your mind and making it quiet. You have to practice meditation and that's what I've been working on. And it's done so much from a positive standpoint with me, my body, my mental state, things like that. So I would highly recommend that, especially for real estate investors, entrepreneurs, if you're not giving, this is as, as important as business school or a business degree or um, a business loan, a commercial loan, or a, uh, you know, a refinance that just went through. It's that, it's probably more important than that. It's probably more important than that. Um, they all are the pieces of the puzzle for me. Not one of these things I mentioned, including the food and diet and drink. If I was missing one of those, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be as in good a shape. I wouldn't be as so optimistic about the future. I wouldn't be in this health level that I feel like I'm at right now. Um, so, you know, my, my next goal after I get through these two races, I'm going to have all my numbers checked out. Uh, there's a lot of really cool services now. We're going to talk about that on our next uh, podcast. I know I keep going back and forth, but... Uh, we are so much to cover here and uh, really, really important stuff, though, this cross training and having everything fit together. This was my puzzle. Everybody has a different puzzle and pieces they're putting in there, but you'll know when you get there because you enjoy all of it. Uh, whether it's a long run for me, like, you know, my long runs right now are um, I'm doing 12, I'm doing 13 and a half miles tomorrow. I'm, I'm fucking looking forward to it. I, I never thought I would say that at 54, but I am pumped up about this. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to it. It's my quiet time, my rhythm time. Sometimes I listen to a podcast. You might be listening to me right now where you're running, kudos to you, or I'll listen to a book or something like that. But a lot of times I'm just, I'm, I'm not listening to anything. I'm just listening to my mind. And I'm in a trance. I'm almost meditating while I'm running. I know that sounds so silly, but you'll get there if you keep a pattern on this. Um, that also is something I just, you have to be consistent at this and do the same thing over and over and over. Um, the idea of a pattern is, is really important with training because of uh, several different things. But one of the things is... Um, this idea that uh, in Atomic Habits, James Clear is the author of that, but he was talking about a study 
that talked about the importance of just doing something consistently rather than doing it outstanding. Uh, in other words, it's it's good. It's better to be consistently good than once in a while outstanding. And and that's what I've learned with this. So uh, again, get out there. You don't have to have the perfect training every time. Just get out there and do the training. And all of these different pieces fit together from food to diet, to drink, to working out, to cross training, and to something that we'll talk about next uh, down the road in our next podcast, and that's uh, sleep and rest and recovery. Uh, the, the other thing that I did that has made a difference is something that I talked about before in, in the food and, and drink side, and that's these 12 to 16 hour fasts. Fat, uh, can, fasting has really good and positive health benefits. If you look back in our past, let's call it the caveman days, um, the body was trained not to eat for long periods at a time. And the body then went into protection mode and growth mode. Well, we don't have that problem today because food is so prevalent. Matter of fact, it's probably over prevalent for many, many people. So they never put their body in a training platform that the body was built on in how to make yourself better. The body goes into build mode. Hey, how do I protect myself? How do I um, you know, go into this state of ketosis where I'm using things like glycogen and fat rather than eat a, uh, using energy stores of other things um, to, make, uh, to make myself run, my machine run. So those understanding glycogen and how those fill the muscles and, and ketosis and, and understanding uh, the idea of carbs and using that as a fuel source and, and what happens with ketosis and, and burning fat and things like that has been all of a good, I, I guess I knew it, but it's, I didn't, I wasn't in, I wasn't a practitioner of it. And that has really helped me with this weight journey uh, type of scenario, how the body uses energy, fat, proteins, glycogens, carbs, all of these things. And the body's an amazing, amazing machine. And uh, it's, it's, I'm eating now for energy, not eating just mindlessly. I'm eating everything that I put in my body. I'm thinking about what it's for and how I'm going to fuel my workouts and my runs and uh, that type of thing. So that's my workout. I'm working out probably, you know, an hour, easily an hour to an hour and a half per day. Like tomorrow, my workout will probably be two and a half, 245, something like that on these long runs that I'm doing just because I'm training for these um, particular races. But your schedule will change. But give yourself seven hours a week. Give yourself the time to work out. Start off walking. Start off, um, you know, doing some light biking uh, and, and maybe look into these zones. We'll, we'll definitely talk on that a little bit more. I'll give you a little sneak peek. If you want to know more about that zone training, and I'll put it in the, the comments uh, below if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, if, you, if you study a little bit of Dr. Pita Atia, he's a medical doctor. He started out as a cardiac surgeon and, and uh, he's a, uh, a workout athlete uh, from a biking standpoint and, and other things as well. But he's just one of the people that I've learned all of this from. So you might want to do a little bit of research on uh, Dr. Atia. Really, really good stuff. That is it today, folks. I'm, I'm hoping that you enjoyed the uh, Real Wise podcast for today. We Again, we're talking about working out and energy. I loved it. It's something that I'm passionate about. Hopefully, you can see that. And uh, I, would, I would hope that if you're an entrepreneur or business owner, if you are somebody that wants to just perform better and do better, you're going to start to give yourself seven hours a week, one hour per day. If you don't help yourself, can't help those around you. Uh, kind of thing. And so I think that's really, really important. Remember, wealth has nothing to do with money. Success has everything to do with failure and life is as simple as you make it. We will see you on the next podcast, my friends. And uh, until then, have a great day and we'll talk real soon.